so I will represent my work with, uh, which uses highway networks. Uh, it's a really simple model compared to most of the models you will see today, but it did pretty well and I will tell you why this works better than a simple baseline. Uh, so this is a very simple perceptron model which is a basic building block of a neural net. We, we are all familiar with this. The highway networks is a small alteration of this block as in uh, shown here. And so this is not very different than a, a, than a LSTM, but the goal here is to do a feed-forward network rather than a recurrent. And you can see there are two gates, and uh, those are called transfer gate and carry gate, and they control how much of the information is to be transferred from one layer to another. The goal of this kind of uh, network is to train a very, very deep networks so that you can remember stuff in a long uh, time frames. Uh, so not exactly time frame, but in uh, multiple layers of feature. Now, so, th so this, is a, this is really good. I'm the original authors of this paper. They were able to achieve really good results in uh, MNIST and uh, Cypher 10. But, uh, but this wasn't really used for any other real uh, big data sets like VQA. So I thought I should give it a try. And since I wanted to do a really deep networks, and uh, residual uh, network was already taken by Neural Labs, so I had to be unique in some other way. So uh, this is a very basic summary. You can see the equations here, but there's nothing too fancy other than just having two more components here, so two uh, two extra parameters per layer. I have omitted the biases for simplicity. Okay, so. Now for multimodal learning, we have two set of inputs, right? So there's image and there's question. So the idea is how do we how do we use how do we use this building block to learn two different inputs? So my idea was really simple. I was trying to experiment with different techniques, and the simplest was to do this. And surprisingly, this worked. So I I couldn't even get time to work on more complicated uh, mixtures of this. But here X2 is the embeddings from the from the question x1 is the pre-trained image, uh, image vectors but you know to win a challenge you just kind of take a simple building block put it together and uh, let it run uh, in a real challenge like this you really need a deeper network so when you start with that you add a lot of lot of layers you drink a lot of coffee and finally you stumble upon stuff like this uh, looks really scary from far but if you, so this is nothing but the same building block repeated several times, and how many times, of course that's the million dollar question, okay, maybe not million dollar, but a question worth uh, Titan X, but uh, in my case it was 10, but I will tell you why that number 10 and why not 20 or 50. So here each word, so each word comes from the question, and then I just, I use a pre-trained uh, vectors, I use glove vectors, I also experimented with other kind of pre-trained world vectors. I experimented with training my own vectors. The results were almost uh, same. And uh, so here now, if you look carefully, and if you if you really remember the baseline uh, architecture shown by the previous uh, speakers, the, so you have this, you have the, you have the LSTM on the question and the image fe and the image features, and they are combined, and then there is a multilayer perceptron. Now this is different only in the sense that it is kind of LSTM but it is not learning the question LSTM separately to the image. Learning takes place at the same time and I would, I would want you to pay attention to the architecture which the next speaker will show you because if you really squint your eyes they are similar. Okay, so Results and performance, you guys already know the numbers, good enough, not the best. And you know in real world you have to do a lot of ensembles and some uh, dirty tricks, uh, you know. But uh, okay, as long as this is a machine learning model and for challenge it's okay, but for a real visual question answering, I agree with uh, Jitendra that you really have to think hard and uh, ask uh, m more important questions which will lead to better models and I, and I agree with the first speaker uh, that we have to really understand why a particular model works. 
Okay, uh, now, so since this is a multi-layer kind of a deal, you would really want to know how many layers are held. So I said here I use 10 layers, but why only 10? So here are the numbers for, for using VGGNet and ResNet. You can see these uh, parameters, they are in millions. So, you know, th this is really, really, really huge network. Just to tell you how huge this, this network is that I was training at a batch size of 16 and my data set was almost 10 million because, I, because like I said, I, I was using every single answer given by Turks. So this was like taking days to complete. So this is a simple figure which shows the same results. And I and uh, like Young Dong said in the first talk, ResNet and the and, uh, rest and VGNet are not that different for theory. You know, in challenge, even a one percent is good. So, but you can see the difference in the number of parameters. And you know, you have to do a lot of fiber parameter search to get the optimal numbers, and this is the result. Of course, uh, even though I won a for being a single team, I really learn from people who have put their code and learn from other people, those who have put their people in archive. I will check your questions if you have any. Thank the speaker. We can actually take just one question. Unfortunately, we are short on time. So, any one question? What was the one thing that helped the most? Uh, you mean other than the model itself? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, so I used uh, some uh, class weighted uh, negative log likelihood for a criteria which I didn't see in any other paper because for this yes no and two these three answers were so common that like I saw, I saw in one of the emails even for uh, irrelevant question answer is like uh, two or yes so by doing that I uh, minimized the predictions of those and I think that helped. Thank you. Thanks, Aditya. Thank you. I would now like to invite the runner-up team for the Real Image Challenges um, to present their talk. The team members.